recording. So welcome to everyone. Uh, can everybody see me uh, talking at the top there? I should be along the top of your screen. Okay, and then I have another window as well open and that's the one of all the pictures. You could probably see my hand going, that should be large. So hopefully everybody's gotten those instructions. And if you haven't and you have a question about how to do that, just put it in the comments. So I'd like to thank everybody for coming and joining me today. Um, my name is Rhiannon Barry, and I will be leading the gentle painting workshop today. So it's a, a take on the traditional painting workshops. I intentionally put in some mindfulness and some calming aspects. So you might hear a little bit of music during a period of time. I might ask you to get up and stretch a little bit, or I might ask you, you know, like what thoughts are coming through your mind as you're doing this. So this is really less of um, a paint by numbers and do what I do type of class. It's more of a mindfulness and time for yourself to be creative session. So I really do encourage uh, exploring different colors. And if something grabs a hold of you and you think, you know what, this balloon needs something else, then I encourage you to add on as well. So a little bit about me, just a little bit, because I know you guys want to get started on this. Um, but uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I've been a social worker for about six and a half years. And in that time, I've developed a lot of art-based recreational therapy programming. And uh, it's something that I really like to do. So I am pursuing uh, additional credentials in art therapy right now. And um, I find this gentle painting workshop has been um, something that a lot of people like to take part in both in person and over uh, online uh, much more recently um, now that we're all sort of separated a little bit so again thank you for joining me and I hope that you do enjoy it so I'm gonna go over some of the supplies first that you'll be needing so first you will definitely need a rag or paper towels I like to use a cloth rag just something like an old shirt or an old sheet ripped up and if you don't have that, paper towels are great. Um, I also like to keep a little spray bottle handy. And this is so that I can add clean water to any paint colors that might be a little bit thick and need thinning out. Um, if you don't have a spray bottle, that's okay. Just have two cups of water, one that's clean water and then one that you use to rinse all your brushes off. Now, if you don't have uh, all these supplies, that's okay, I'm gonna give you five minutes to run around and grab it all, uh, but first I'm gonna go over everything you need. So again, maybe two glasses of water, some paper towel. Um, you're also going to need a pencil, an eraser, or a pencil with an eraser. And then if you have a ruler, that would be really handy too. If you don't have a ruler and you just need something with a hard straight edge, so maybe a book or a piece of cardboard, something that can give you a little bit of a straight line so that you're not just free, uh, free handing the drawing, but it gives you a little bit of an edge. And um, if you don't have those things, you can run and grab them. Everybody should have, and I'll give you time to do that, but um, everybody should have a variety of paintbrushes. So I know um, when you do an in-person paint class, all the brushes are given to you. So online, it makes it a little bit more difficult because we all have different brushes and that's okay. Um, what I'm going to do is just show you what I'm going to use today and then maybe an alternative that you can look for or you might have. I'm gonna use a flat, square brush to do most of the background. So that would include this area. If you don't have exactly this one, maybe you have this one. So this one comes in a pack at the dollar store. So any flat square brush that'll give you a little bit of coverage so that you can cover the back will work. Um, and then also, I'll be using this brush. 
to do the clouds. But if you don't have one that's exactly like that, say maybe you have one that's smaller and that's okay. So anything close to that. And also, if you don't have a brush like this, we will be using our fingers as well. So you are going to get a little uh, dirty with your fingers making the clouds. So just get as close as you can. And then I also like to have some angle brushes. So if you have an angle brush, this is a really nice tool to have because it'll help you just get into some of the corners when you're painting the different colors. But again, you don't have to be exact on this painting, but it is a nice tool to have. So if you have an angle brush, keep that handy. And they do come in different sizes. So you might have um, a larger one or you might have a smaller one, different sizes. So those are good to have too. And then any um, small brushes are nice to have around too, just in case you want to um, use them to fill in little spots that are harder to get. So I have some little round brushes. And uh, so it's really up to you. Uh, every artist paints a little bit differently and um, uses different tools. A lot of tools are, you know, universal, but that doesn't mean you have to use exactly what I'm using. So those are the brushes. And then I just have a variety of paints, so and different paint types too. So whatever you have is great. Um, I have uh, a couple different purples. One's like an eggplant and one's uh, a purple violet. So there's two purples. I like purple a lot. And then I have um, this acrylic blue. So any acrylic blue will do. We need a little bit of blue for the background. And then I have these, these are the two main colors that I recommend, but again, this is your balloon, so you can make it whatever colors you want. I'll give you tips and tricks, but you can do whatever colors that, that you like that match your decor even. So this is magenta. I'm going to be using this and lightening it up. And then I have an aqua green. So for some reason, the label's backwards, but aqua green. And then I grabbed a couple uh, extra ones. So I have, um, they call this portrait pink. And this one is a light blue lavender, but I call it periwinkle. And then I thought today might be fun to add in a couple of uh, neons. So I've been experimenting with neons lately, so I'm going to add some yellow and green in today. You don't have to, but if you have a different color, like maybe you like, you know, different blues or oranges, feel free to add them in and I'll show you how to, how to do that when we get to that point. Uh, the next thing is, if you have gold paint, that's awesome. But if you opted to do the uh, gold leaf and you have some of that, you're going to need a little bit of gold leaf. Um, you're going to need um, a glue stick make it stick. Now, if you don't have a glue stick, it's okay. You can probably make the stick to some wet paint, but if you have a glue stick, go uh, grab it out of your craft store. And then uh, a clean brush to put the glue on. We'll be um, taking the glue off the glue stick and putting it right onto the canvas and then sticking the gold onto it. So you need a little brush just for the glue. And then last but not least, just like a fluffy, softer brush. One of these other brushes that I showed you earlier will do as well. It's for when you do put the gold on, you're going to need to take some of the loose pieces off and you just want a softer brush to do that with. If you end up just having like a harder brush, you don't have one of these. This is like a really old one that I have kind of sitting around. It's really fluffy, but if you have a harder one, you just go a little bit more gentle on it. You just don't go like that, right? Just take a little bit more time with it. So um, I'm going to give everybody five minutes now. You can get up and get, uh, if you need a cloth for under your working station, a rag, a paper towel, an extra glass of clean water, or you need to run to get a pencil and eraser, and uh, maybe a ruler too. So you're going to have five minutes now to go and grab that stuff.
Does anybody have any questions? No questions, okay. Oh. Is it Sean again? Okay, yeah, go ahead and unmute yourself. So if you look in the bottom left corner, there should be a little microphone. Yeah. I just got it. Hello, hello, hi. Um, I mean, I could not manage to get, like, I just bought a set of uh, pinks. Probably, like, it doesn't have a pink or something. It has blue, yellow, and uh, okay. stuff. Maybe I can uh, use whatever I want, uh, I have, right? I have yeah. this one. What I'll do is I'll just kind of give you tips on which, um, which ones to add white to, and then which size should be darker. Okay. But it, yeah, you can use the paints that you have. Do you have a white there? Yeah, I have white, I have orange and red, and um, a kind of a green, brown, and a blue, and yellow. Okay, so you don't have to use all of them, but you can use as many as you like. So maybe kind of figure out which ones uh, you like best, and we'll definitely need the white. Okay, I have white, yeah. Okay, good. You. You're welcome. Okay, so hopefully, I'll give everybody another minute or two, but hopefully everybody has um, all the supplies that they need. And like I said, if you don't have a ruler, just grab a, a, like a, a book that's got a hard straight edge or a piece of cardboard or something that you can use as a guide for drawing. You can always freehand, but it's always nicer to have just something to, to work with. So this is my art journal and it's just, you know, a regular old dollar store art journal. Sometimes I use it when I'm drawing lines too, because it's got that nice edge if I don't feel like getting up and if I'm in the zone. Um, but this is, this is my art journal and I, I use it to test out ideas. So you can see um, this is the idea and then this is what I transferred it to. So it does change a little bit. And that's okay because of the size difference. And you'll see I'm using a 16 by 20 inch canvas. Depending on what you're using, your balloon might be a little bit smaller, but we're going to try to get the dimensions the same for everybody so it looks relatively similar. Okay, so if anybody uh, needs more time, please let me know in the comments. So you're going to use a, a pencil to draw. Today we're going to draw on the dimensions. Um, I'm going to be using um, a black pencil, so hopefully it shows up more clearly for you. The first thing you want to do um, when you're mapping out where the balloon should go is drawing the box. From the box, all the other lines are going to sort of make more sense. So the first thing I did when I was looking at transferring it from journal to canvas was sort of estimate where everything would go. And I found that giving myself three inches from the bottom of my canvas and five and a half inches from the side was where my sweet spot was. But again, this is a 20 by 16. So really, you just want to start by eyeing it. So you want to leave some room for the clouds and you want it to be not in the exact middle of the canvas, over just a little bit, but you've got to make a, a decision about where that first little dot's going to be. And from that dot, you're going to draw a, a rectangle. Now, my rectangle on my canvas is about an inch and a 
inch and a quarter long. So if you're working on something half the size of mine, maybe cut that in half. And it's about an inch high. So again, it would be half an inch if you're working on a half size canvas. From this corner here, we're going to do a diagonal line backwards, and then we're going to connect them. So we're creating the top to the basket. And that will be the inside of our basket. And this is why you have the eraser too. So if you don't get it exactly right the first time, that's okay. I feel like I'm in math class again, drawing shapes. So you're trying to go backwards so that it looks 3D. And I'm going to bring this a little bit closer to the camera so you can see um, a little bit closer what I've done. So you have to do what's right for your canvas size, and that's the trick here. And that's where the eraser comes in, really. And um, if you're erasing and you find all your marks aren't disappearing, that's OK, because we're going to cover everything with paint. So don't worry about little mistakes. Just erase them as best you can. Now from this second line that we drew on the rectangle, we're going to go straight up the canvas all the way up. So it'll be our first line in our balloon. You want to line it up, that first line. And again, it's okay if you make a mistake because you have an eraser there. So I'm hoping you guys can see that on your on your end. Try to make it darker. So once you have um, this line drawn, we're going to draw a circle, sort of like an oval above it. And that's the opening of the air balloon. Sort of like a squished oval. And then from each corner, we're going to connect the box to the oval. So we've already done this line. And this one and this one connect to the bottom of the oval. And the two on the front of the front triangle connect to the top of the oval. So those two in the back corners connect to the back bottom of the oval, and the two in the top connect to the top line on the top of the oval that you drew. 
Does everybody have this shape? Good. I see a few yeses. Okay. So from there, we're just going to map out um, where our starting uh, and end points will be for the balloon. So you can see in the original, um, this side is lower than that side. So this side is about halfway. So find the halfway mark on your canvas and just draw a circle. And that's a, a guiding mark. And then on this side, draw something that's about a quarter of your canvas. And that's your next mark. So this side will be half, this side will be a quarter. And then you're just going to connect it to your oval. So I'm just using my straight edge here from my half point and coming all the way to the oval. And that's the first edge of the balloon. So right here, finding my half mark. And then just using a straight edge to bring it all the way to the bottom. Same with the other side. So we're going to use a quarter down. So this would have been the half. So we're going to go a quarter because this side's higher than this side. I've drawn my circle, but now I'm going to go ahead and connect it to my oval. And if yours is up on an easel, it might be easier to lay it down and do this part. I just have mine up, standing up on an easel so it's easier for you to see. But if it's easier to do laying flat, please uh, lay it down on whatever table you're using. And again, if the first time doesn't work out for you, please use, feel free to erase as much as you need to. Okay. Okay, so looks like we, we might have a, a, a new person who just joined us, so I'm going to quickly go over what we did. We are just drawing out um, what we're going to be painting. Um, the first thing I did was go in about um, five inches from the edge of my canvas, but I have a 20 by 16, so you might want to just go in a little under half and draw a spot, a dot. You want to leave room on the bottom for clouds, so don't go too low or too high. Uh, keep it within maybe the first quarter of your canvas. You want to draw a rectangle and then you want to make it 3D by adding a few extra lines like you see I have here. We've drawn one straight line from this point on the rectangle straight up through the middle. So this is halfway, half and half of my canvas. Your line should go relatively close to the half mark of your canvas. And then to get the edges, we've made a mark at the halfway mark and the one quarter. Um, way down mark two. So this is half of your canvas. This is about a quarter way down, maybe a little bit more. And we just did some outlines for the balloon. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is just um, looking at the original, we have um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 sections. So the tops of them are going to be wider. So we're going to start out wide and the line is going to get thinner and join this oval. So I'm going to do the first two on either side. So on mine, 
The first one is about two inches on either side, but again, my canvas is 20 by 16. So if yours is smaller, maybe it's one inch on either side. So you start at the top and you aim it towards the oval here. You take your straight edge and you make a line towards the oval like that. So this is line one, this is line two, and then I'll do an exact same line on the other side. So again, I'm just measuring to make sure it's the same. And add an angle. And again, if you got this a little bit wrong the first time, just erase it and try again. We have three hours together, so we can take some time on drawing this. So I have one, two, three. Now on this side, I'm going to mark the top of my canvas for where my next one is going to go. So you can see it's a little bit, it's a wide top again, coming down to a skinny bottom. And the following one, you're going to skip the corner. So this one, it will encompass the corner. And again, diagonal going down. You're gonna have one more on this side right here, a pathway between your mark and that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw these and you can see exactly the direction they should be going in. There. Okay, so I have four lines. And like this one. They all have to meet down here at the oval. So just leave me a comment if you are having trouble with this step and I might be able to give you some more tips. I'm gonna make these a little bit darker for you. Hopefully you can see that. On this side, so on this side, we have, this is our middle one. We have one, two, three, four, five. But on this side, we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six. So you should have one, two, three, four, five, this way from the middle. And then we're gonna just mark out six more. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we need six more on this side. 
and they all should be aiming towards the diagonal towards your oval. So just try to get as close as possible to mine and I'm going to draw these with my straight edge all the way down and so you can see the sort of trajectory of the line. Now this one is right at the corner. This is the hardest part, I promise. After this, it gets a lot more fun. Okay. So I've got all my lines on there and I'll wait for you to catch up. But I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve spaces. And that's the outline for our painting. Twelve spaces, thirteen lines. Okay, and when you're done drawing it, just leave me a message in the comments so I know where everybody is at. Okay, thanks, Samantha. Thanks, Mel. I'm just gonna work on erasing a few of these extra lines while other people catch up. Now's a good time if you wanna get up and stretch your legs. <clears throat> Maybe wiggle out your shoulders. How are you doing, Shama Gum? Good? Perfect. Thanks. Okay, so I'm going to start putting the paints that I want to use um, on my plate here. So hopefully you have a plate or a palette or something that you're using. And like I said, I really do like the magenta for this, so I'm going to put a little bit of that. And you can always put more as you go, so if you need more, feel free to add more. I would start out with just a little bit because I never know how much I'm going to need. And then this is the turquoise. No, this is the aqua green. So, aqua green. 
And I'm just going to go ahead and put a few more colors. I'll put the purples. You'll definitely uh, need blue and white for the clouds in the background. So add that to your plate. Grab some extra. Oh, I have added a lot of white, and that's because we're going to use it to mix with colors, but we're also going to use a lot of it in the clouds in the background. You want a good amount of white on there. And then any colors that you find appealing. We'll work them into the, into the painting as we go. Okay. This is going to be a fun one. I'm putting a little bit of bright yellow and bright green out too. I'm going to see how that works. I can put that in somewhere. Um, so that's what my plate looks like right now. Yours might look a little bit different, but the techniques are all the same. So. Okay, so once everybody has um, their paints out, I wanted to um, go over how to draw some of these lines. Those are our guides for painting, the balloon especially. So I'm just going to kind of freehand them. And the first one I'm going to do is a wide V towards the middle one. And this is something we're going to, it's a pattern we're going to create and bring through the whole balloon. Arrowhead. So this we're going to take all the way down to the bottom. And I think what I did was, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and eleven, twelve. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and they get skinnier as you get lower. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven. So eleven lines. They're relatively um, big chunks. They don't go too close to each other. If you go too close to each other, that's okay too. You'll just have like a cool skinny sort of pattern going through one part of your balloon, which is fine. And then you just do the other side of the arrowhead.
think I can fit a 12th one in here. Mine's pretty big. If you have a big canvas like mine, you might want to put 12. If you have a smaller canvas, nine might work. I'm going to go with 12. And then you just kind of pull this across throughout the whole balloon. So if you've gone downwards, you're going to go upwards. But you don't want to go straight across. It has to be an arrowhead. So down, up, down. You're going to pull it through the whole balloon. So that's the top. I'll show you on the bottom here as the lines get skinnier. It's the same arrowheads. I've done this a couple times before, so I know I'm making it look probably a little bit more easy. But if you need to use your eraser, go ahead and leave me a comment if you need more time. I went up when I should have went down there. It's okay, everything's going to get covered with paint, so I'm not too worried about pencil lines. The only thing I would say is don't press too hard. I'm drawing pretty dark lines so that you can see what I'm doing, but your pencil lines can be pretty light. You don't want to indent the canvas by pressing too hard. This is sort of uh, a good time to clear your mind because you're doing a lot of repetitiveness here. Give you a chance to forget about your to-do list and anything that was bothering you today. And this is something you really need to concentrate on to get the right look. We're all doing this together now, so we can all help each other too. If you have a tip, you can leave it in the comments. If you found an easier way to do something, it works better for you. When you get to the edges, you might wonder, should I, should I bring it over more? And I say, draw the line in now. If you question it, if it's if it seems like such a small area to you, you get to that edge, and you can decide later when you have when you're in the painting uh, part whether or not it's something you want to make a different color or not. But I say pull everything over as far as you can right now. You get to these sort of edges over here it's kind of questionable like well is this part of this one or is it part of that one you're just going to have to decide there we go Hopefully by now you're seeing your balloon come together nicely. 
stop and make adjustments if you need to. We'll have time for a few different breaks throughout. But I encourage you to always just kind of roll your shoulders out a little bit and maybe take a deep breath. If you're concentrating really, really hard, maybe let your tongue down from the top of your mouth and relax your jaw even. Some people get right into it. I'll give you guys a few minutes to catch up to me. I see some pretty um, large areas here at the top, so I feel like I can probably get away with adding another arrowhead there. And here, and then. Not so, not so much over here, though. Okay, and I'm going to give you guys maybe three or four more minutes to finish drawing it out, and then I'm going to start on the background and the clouds. And again, you can let me know in the comments if you're finished drawing in the balloon. Good, you're good. And don't be afraid to ask for more time. We, we do have another two hours together. So if you need more time, let me know. So, for anybody who's um, already finished, okay, good to see a few people are done. Okay, good. Okay, so I'm going to use this larger, sorry, I don't know if you can see it. Okay, there we go. A larger square um, brush. So, if you have something like that, or maybe you have something like this, just something that is. Um, going to give you a lot of coverage so that you can get all this background painted in fairly quickly. If you use something a little smaller, it might not, it might take you a little bit longer, and that's okay too. But I recommend something like this. Okay, and then also we're going to use white and then blue. And if you have the turquoise, or the, um, what do they call it, aqua green. Um, I'm gonna use a little bit of that as well, and I will sort of, um, like, I'll walk you through how I mix my colors together. So if you're using um, three different colors than me, you can mix them in the same sort of way. So for the most part, we're gonna need white because it's a light background. So I'm just gonna take this brush and I'm gonna dip it into my water just to get it wet to start. And I'm gonna pull some white into the middle and I'm gonna add a little bit of blue to it. I'm just gonna mix that together until I get a nice light sort of sky blue. It's gonna be really light. 
don't know if you can see that, but fairly light. And I might even add just a little bit of this aqua into it. And then a little bit more white to lighten it up. A little bit more blue. You're really mixing until you get a sky color that you like. And if you only have blue and white, just make it a nice light white and blue. Now with my spray bottle, I am going to add just a, a spritz of water right to it. Sort of mix it all in there. We'll just thin it out. So depending on what kind of paint you're using, if you're using paint from the dollar store, you might have thinned out paint already. If you're using paint that's like a nice, a better, uh, thicker brand of acrylic, you might need a little bit of water for just to, to make it spread a little bit more evenly and easier for you. We're just speaking right on to this is a store bought canvas. So because I I enjoy a little bit of water when I'm painting, I'm just gonna spritz my canvas maybe twice over here and once over here. If you don't have a spritz bottle, you can take your paintbrush and dip it in some clean water and add it to right to your paint. Don't add too much though because too much water in acrylic isn't great if your paint will start separating um but a little bit is okay you just don't want to go too much so add a little bit if you're unsure you can always add more later if you find that your paint is like really trailing and catching on the canvas it might be good to add either more paint but then sometimes too it could be that um, you need a little bit of water. So I guess what I'm doing right now is just I'm painting all around the edge and to the bottom of the canvas. And I'm painting it a nice sky blue. I'm going to add a little bit more of this green tone in there. As you're painting, you need to get the edges. Um, that's because you don't want it to be an afterthought and then the paint color you've mixed is, is all gone. So you want it to match. So paint the edges as you go. And you can see I need to mix more. Of this paint. So I got my color and I'm just going to match it to what I already had mixed. So this is sort of as you're going, you're figuring out how much paint you need. I'm going to add a little bit of water to it again, mix it right in, and that's because I have a thicker paint. This side now and the edges. We're going all the way to the edge of the balloon. And if you get over top of the balloon a little bit, that's okay because we are going over that with other colors. So it's okay to layer.
And I hope you're remembering to get your edges too as you go. It can be a fairly thin uh, layer of paint. It doesn't have to be super thick. And just keep going to get to the bottom. Now you're going to go around the box. But I just wanted to mention as well that you want to get in here too. So the background is in those spots as well. And you might find that using a smaller um, round brush works for that better. Just to get in there. But this paint is light enough that you'll likely see your pencil mark underneath anyway. So even if you go over the pencil, that's okay. It's just a guide. We're going to paint over that pencil too. So we'll be able to find it again. But it's important to get those little spots after going around your box. Just make sure you've covered all the white spots on the canvas there. If your paint's a little thin in some, go back in and touch it up and make sure it's all covered. So I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom because I know I'm going to be adding clouds. So I think this is probably as far down as I'm going to go right now. If you went all the way to the bottom, that's okay. Hopefully you have a nice blue sky. I have a nice blue greeny sky. And then let me know in the comments when you're all done that part. A little bit more while I'm waiting for you guys to let me know. When you reach the same point as me, just leave me a comment. Everybody looks like they're busy at work.
Okay, is everybody caught up? Good, I see one, yes. Samantha, how are you doing? And Mel, you guys caught up to this point? Great. Okay, so I'm going to start on the clouds and I'm just going to use um, this brush. And again, if you have something similar, that's great. If not, um, we're also going to use our fingers and I can show you how to make the clouds with your fingers um, and with the brush. So I'm just going to start on this side with the brush. So I'm just going to use mainly the white. We want a lot of white. So you're going to load your brush up. And then I'm going to throw in a tiny little bit of magenta. So I'm just going to dip my brush in a little bit of magenta. Just a little bit. And we're just going to test it out and see how it goes. The clouds are pretty easy and um, they're very abstract. So there's nothing really like wrong that you can do. But you're just going to sort of make these billowy sort of uh, like half circles. You can see my magenta is really showing up on there. So that's nice. So I've got a little bit of color already. And I'm just sort of tapping it in and letting the brush sort of create these half circles. Nice little billows. And I'm going to tap it back into just the white. And I'm going to come in and like add more white to it. So you can see as you add. You're creating layers of cloud. And then as they dry, you can see where the colors are popping out too, which is interesting. Some of the background might pop out, or you can even add some of it in. So again, taking some white, a good, good amount, and then dipping it maybe into some of this aqua green but just like a tiny little bit because it goes a long way that tiny little bit and then doing the same thing so we're pressing it onto the canvas and letting it overlap now what's going to happen is as it dries it's going to start making a little bit more sense to you um, where the colors are where the shapes are Again, I'll go back in with more white. These clouds are nice and white. More billowy little areas. Kind of creating like little semicircles. And then you can also. I use the shape of the brush. That's why I like this type of brush. It helps to make that semicircle shape. Now, if you're finding that your clouds aren't looking like billowy, like soft and rolling, um, I'm going to teach you just maybe a fast trick with the fingers. So I usually just I'll dip it in white. Maybe I'll use a little bit of blue this time. So here's my fingers. 
maybe I'll do another little bit of white on that one. So those, there's my fingers. And I'm gonna sort of back up for this one so that you can see. And I'm just gonna go like this, and then I'll add a little bit of blue here. And this adds like a, this is a nice billowy cloud too, just using your fingers. And you're just going to kind of do that sort of circular pattern that you were doing with the brush, but you're going to do it with your fingers instead. Again, just semi-circles. Well, this is messy, so make sure you have your rag on hand. But you can see both work. If you don't want to get your hands messy, maybe just use the brush. If you like getting your hands messy and you prefer that, use a whole bit of the clouds with your fingers. So I'm just going to bring my clouds up a little bit more on each side by doing those sort of half circles and layering a little bit of half circles here and I can always half brush and half fingers too so I can push the paint where I want it to go and you can already see that um, the side you started on is likely drying a little bit and you can see some of the cloud shapes coming out now. I'm going to show you again with the brush. So I have um, a lot of white and a tiny little bit of blue this time. I'm just adding colors into my clouds that I'm going to be adding. Into, and I think it'll if I add it into the clouds and the balloon too, it sort of pulls the painting all together versus just doing the clouds white or like maybe a tiny little bit of gray. I like to use the colors instead. So again, it's just semi-circles and you just keep doing that and nice, um, a nice pattern of fluffy clouds will come out. And again, I've done this a lot of times, so maybe I'm making this look um, pretty easy, but it's it's quite a simple stroke and the more you practice the better you become at it. So if today your clouds aren't perfect how you'd like them, that's okay. Just get another canvas and uh, keep practicing. But I'm sure everybody's is going to be wonderful today and uh, a little bit different from everybody. So that's what's fun about this is everybody gets to add their own colors and we'll all have a little bit of a different looking end result. I'm gonna add some pink in my clouds now. If you don't have pink and you have a white or a red, uh, just maybe add a tiny little bit of, bit of red to get that pinky look. I'm going right over top of my box, you can see just a little bit. And I'll probably touch that up again later after we've painted the box to add a little bit more clouds in and around it. But for now, I just kind of touched along the bottom edge. Well, you might need to add more white to your plate at this point because we are using quite a bit of white. So make sure you're covering your canvas. If you need to add more paint, please do. Does anybody have any questions or need any tips? Happy to give tips and tricks. Ooh. 
And this might just be the first layer that we're putting on. You might want to come back to it after it's dried and do some more touch-ups after too, like after we're all finished the balloon. And that's okay. That's good. See, it takes on a different form once it dries and all the colors sort of set. And you can always um, get up from wherever you're painting and maybe walk backwards in the room and like look at it from very far away and different ideas will pop out at you. Since we're sitting so close to it for so long, we get very used to it. And um, when you get too used to something like this, um, you end up seeing flaws maybe or not seeing like the bigger picture of how it's coming together. So I do encourage you like um, get up, uh, step back every once in a while, um, get another perspective on what you're doing. So maybe if after you've filled in all your cloud section, um, you want to do that before we move into the balloon, that's a really good idea. And again, I wouldn't add too much water here. You're really trying to cover the canvas, but if you need to add a little bit, just add a little bit of clean water. And again, for my finger painters, I'll go back in with my fingers in a second and join you. Color on there. Let me go back and look at the again. Um, putting some paint on my fingers, some white. Here is it. I'm going to go in. Add a few billows here and there. And as yeah, adults, <laughs> we, uh, we don't really finger paint anymore, but I know for myself when I was really young, I loved finger painting, squishing the paint between my fingers and making a big mess. But so I still do it. I I brought it back. Just going in circles. Make sure you got a good amount on there. Circular motion. You're going to bring it all the way to the bottom of the canvas. If you're going to add a little bit more white to it, just try to define those tops of your clouds a little bit. So maybe put the closet of white closer to the top of the billow and then blend it in towards the bottom. I'll give you a little bit more definition. Yeah, it's fun, <laughs> Biggie. I like finger painting. I have one painting actually 
a tutorial called Smoky Mountains, and uh, it's 95% uh, finger painting, so much fun and messy. Okay, so we'll give the clouds maybe about five more minutes for everybody to catch up. And like I said, we can touch them up again later once it's all dried because you'll have a better perspective of where you need to add white or maybe a little bit more color or definition. And also please message me if you're falling very far behind. If you're just joining us, um, I don't know if we could catch you up at this point, but definitely you're welcome to uh, watch us all get through this painting together. And uh, there will be a video um, that we'll be able to post later on that you can see on the Figment uh, website or even on my um, website or social media. I'll be adding it or uploading it. I do, I'm um, on Facebook. I have an art group called Art by Rhiannon Berry. So that's pretty easy to remember. My name is Rhiannon Berry. And then on Instagram, I'm under Rian and Barry Art. Uh, you can also find it on my website. I'll, I'll likely upload it onto my website. It's called uh, www.bewhimsyartloft.ca and I can add those in the comments actually for you in case you're looking later on and you want to you wanna catch up. Hope everybody who was finger painting made sure they had a rag handy because I know how that can go all over your pants and your clothes and I always fun trying to get acrylic paint out of clothing. I have burned a lot of clothes that way. Maybe three more minutes with those clouds for now, and then we'll touch them up again later. So I added some information into the chat too if you wanted to find the video later. Okay, so we've got people done. So if the clouds aren't looking exactly right to you, it's um, you need to let them dry and then come back to them after. That's my tip. Rather than keeping on adding more and more paint to them, because you're gonna have a tougher time fixing them. This, it's all you know, it all becomes one color after a while and almost like a block. So um, give yourself a little bit of a break, shake it off, rinse out your brush, uh, let it. Let it dry. We'll come back to it. I can't remember who said it. Uh, one of the great painters, the masters, might have been Da Vinci. He said, um, "Paint uh, art is never complete; it's only abandoned." So I always go with the rule: at some point, you need to abandon it. You can always come back to it, but you need to abandon it and. Uh, and, and uh, sometimes overworking something can, can be um, 
damaging to your end product. You need to give yourself breaks and 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 things like that too. So if anybody needs a pee break, now is a good time. If you need to grab a drink, and then I will start on the box and the balloon in a couple minutes. So uh, at 2:35. So you guys have about two, two, three minutes. I'll wait. And then just let me know in the comments when you're back and you're ready to rock and roll. Okay, is everybody back? Okay, so I'm gonna start on this box first and you wanna use one of your darker colors underneath it. So I'll show you the color that I'm going to use and then you can decide which one of yours you're going to use. I'm gonna use this dark uh, eggplant or like a plum color. And that, that will be my first coat. So I'm going to coat the whole thing. And we'll come back in here again. Like I said, once they dry, we'll come back in with some more white. So don't worry too much about if you're going over top of clouds or touching them. I just want to concentrate on putting the box right. And for the inside, what I'm going to do is um, I'll add a, a tiny bit of white and make a sort of a mixture of the two. So my plum and my, my white. 
I'm just gonna lighten up the middle or the inside a little bit. You can use, I'm using this angle brush, but I could also use this small round, um, or I can use a small flat. So whatever you have that you feel most comfortable with painting um, in this small space with, that's what you should be using. So I've got my first layer in. Now you want to use the same color. I was using the eggplant with a little bit of white. And you want to do this, uh, the inner part of this. that we created in the beginning. So again, a dark color. This might be blue for you. This could be um, a different color of purple or brown. Something deep. And whatever you choose will be fine. Thick enough that you don't see the canvas underneath. There we go. So we've got the box and the oval done. And with the brush that you used for the box, which I used this one, but again, it could have been a, a smaller flat even. So whichever brush you choose, we're just gonna go back over it and sort of do like a, like just a light brushing. So we're not gonna color it all in, but we're just gonna give it a little bit of a, an out, outside of the basket, a little bit of an effect and let some of the pinks or the plums still come through. So whatever color you're using. Now I'm going to use this green, this aqua green, and I'm just going to, from the side, just kind of swipe in a few swipes over top. And I'm not going to blend it in, I'm just going to swipe it and, and like leave it. And uh, if you miss that, I'm going to do it again on the side here. So you can look up and catch it again. I'm just going to kind of just swipe it in. And I'm just going to leave it. So there's not a lot of, there's no blending it. It's just going to lay over top of this, this color. I'm going to add a little bit to the edges. So we're just creating like an illusion. A little bit of interest and an illusion. And um, just for that basket, nothing crazy, nothing too technical. I'm going to add a little bit of white as well. So, same brush. I'm going to add a little swipe of white over here.
And it's just uh, to give it a little bit of depth and illusion here. I'm going to go along the edge. And then once we have some color on that box, we're going to go ahead and highlight these four strings holding the balloon to the box. Um, the first color I'm going to use, I, I guess it will be this purple, but you can use blue or you can use the same color that you used for the box, the dark color there. And I'm just going to put a swipe of purple and then on each one. And this front one goes right over top. The back ones come from the back corners up to the bottom. And we'll let that dry for a second. And once it's dry, we'll add some white over top of it in the, in the exact same way we just did the, the purple or the plum or whatever color you used for your string. Just getting some color on those strings to, to show how the box is attaching to this giant balloon. And then I'm just taking the same brush, the white, and I'm just going to give it a swipe over top again. Doesn't have to be anything too technical or fancy. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring this a lot closer to the camera so you can kind of see um, what I did a little bit better. Hopefully everybody's had a chance to check this out up close. So you get a good idea now of what I'm saying when you're sitting really close to something and then you get a little bit further from it, how your version of what the image is sort of changes, right? So we're working really close to ours. So I do encourage you to get up and just sort of step back a little bit and kind of take it in. Okay, everybody's done that. Maybe another minute to catch up. Finding some spots on the edge of mine and just putting those edges while I wait. Glad you enjoyed the finger painting, Mel. Seems to be a hit here. Okay. So hopefully everybody has this little box done. I'm going to go on to my first uh, string of colors on the top here. And I'm going to do them very similar to the uh, original here. I'm going to make them a nice light blue. And um, so <clears throat> I'm just going to go straight across and paint them all 
this blue color. So a little bit of white and a little bit of blue mixed together. Good amount because I gotta get all of those colored. I always add more if I need to. It's like old. Got some more paint. I'm going to be a fairly medium, medium light blue, not too, too light. So I've mixed my blue and my white, and I'm going to add a little bit of this green, aqua green in there too. Okay. I've got that pretty mixed. Let me go in up here first. And we're just coloring in between the lines. So for this line, we're just going to paint it all the same blue or whatever color you've chosen um, <clears throat> for the first line. <clears throat> and we'll go all the way across, following the pattern, staying within that pattern. As we go lower, I will mix it up. I'll, I'll have you do like maybe a light and then a dark on the other side, and we'll mix it up as we go. But for this one, we're going to do all the same color. Now, as you're going, keep in mind um, which ones do you want to leave free for gold. So I'm going to mark my gold ones now. I think I'm going to do this one gold. Maybe this one. And this is really random. This is up to you. This is up to your eye. So if you're a very linear, orderly person, you might want to do like gold, gold, like every other one gold. You might want to do like a whole line gold, and that's fine. Um, I like to scatter them around, so that's just sort of me. I'm sort of chaotic, and I like to have things that don't make sense end up making a lot of sense together. So I'm just going to write a G in a few of these spots, and that'll remind me not to paint them. I guess I'll do 10 altogether, 10 spots for me. For you, it might look different. I like to use the angle brush for this because I can get in those corners fairly easy, but I can also go right along the line with it. And then I can turn it sideways and pull the paint, sort of like a flat brush too. But if you don't have an angled brush, that's okay. Just do the best you can.
as you're doing the top layer, it's a good chance to maybe get that top of your canvas, the top edge. So if you're finding that maybe your pencil marks need to come down a little bit more, you can adjust it now with the paint. Get right in with what you drew. I'm making some slight adjustments as I go. Okay, so that was my first color. Um, for my next color, I'm just going to rinse my brush off. I'm going to go for magenta. I'm going to lighten it up a little bit. So this is my magenta. Get a nice amount there. Some white in there. And that looks um, There we go. That's a cool color. So you choose your next color. And we'll lighten it all up again. All right, so my next color is this one, and I wrote a G there, so I'm not going to go into that one. I'm going to grab a little bit more white for this side. Go with this one. I'll white into my jacket. It's a little bit. Okay, <clears throat> and so on. So I'm going to do all of these. As I'm going down on this side, I'm going to use the same color, but I'm just going to add a little bit more white to it. So up top here, I'll bring the white into the other color. If you want to put on some music for this part on your end, there will be a lot of time just us sharing some painting time together and not an awful lot of instruction from me. Just I'll pipe in every now and again um, as we start a new line or so that you can look up and maybe see what I'm doing. But now's a good time if you have you know, a favorite playlist or something, you can throw it on. Okay. 
And I'm going to add a little bit more white to my magenta this time on the side. Sticking in the same color family, but I'm just lightening it up. you get to the end, you can paint the edge of your canvas the color that you're using at that particular time. I'm just kind of doing mine quickly. You can spend a little bit more time doing that if you'd like. You can see that um, how it sort of comes together. It's starting to pop out now at you. So my next color, I'm going to skip a line because I don't want my colors to blend together. They blended a little bit here, which I don't mind. But I don't want it because it's really wet still there. So I'm going to skip a line and I'm actually going to go for the um, aqua, aqua green and I'm going to lighten it up quite a bit. I even add a little spray of water to it. So like I said, I'm going to skip a line and I'm going to go down here. We're pretty much doing the same color all the way across, but you can see in the original, I did mix it up once in a while. I put a few different colors in the same line. And I'll do one of those next just to show you sort of how it's done. And then I'm gonna leave you to fill in the rest of the colors on your own. And we'll come back together once all of ours are all filled in. And I will teach you a little bit about putting like a little bit of a whitewash over top of it um, to add some extra effects and I'll talk a little bit more about the clouds and then we'll do the gold together. So 
I'd say we have about half an hour to fill in this hot air balloon. And uh, as soon as I finish this line, I'll, I'll give you a little demo on how to switch up the colors if you want to be a little bit more creative and out there than just going straight across with the same color all the time. And then you're kind of on your own to pick your own colors after that. And also, if we do end up going over time a little bit, it's not a problem. We can stay on here a little bit longer. I guess that one's not gold anymore. Well, it still could be, but. Sometimes little mistakes happen, that's okay. Just kind of go with the flow. So now I'm going to do one where I use a few different colors instead of all the same color. And I think since I'm doing that, I'm going to be adventurous and I'm going to put in those bright colors, those yellows and greens that I hadn't used before. So I'm going to go for my, my bright green. I'll start here. I'll skip two and then I'll do green again here. Skip two, green there, skip two, green there, skip two. That can be any color for you. It can be purple, it can be orange, it can be white if you really want it. It can be a nice blue. We all know hot air balloons are all different colors. Anything that makes you feel good, whatever color that is, that's the perfect color. Right. 
I'm going to use a blue. I'm going to take some of this blue, stark blue, and I'm going to put some of this green in it. See what we come up with. That's nice good. And some more white. Put some more white on my plate, but. Yeah, I think that's the nice blue. So I'm going to do blue there, 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 and there. And this doesn't all have to be perfect because we are going to add a little bit of like a wash over top of it when we're all done. Come back in like how we did with the bath, just sort of swipe a few strikes of, of uh, lighter colors over top of these darker colors. You can leave some of them just as dark as they are, or you can put white over top of all of them. So my blue is on. And I'm going to use um, blue purple. I think I'll do this since these two seem to want to run into each other. I'm going to mix them into one color and use that. You can see you can switch it up. I've used three colors here. If you want to use two colors in one row, you can do that. You can do one all one color. And then of course we're breaking it up with little pieces of gold. So it looks like whoever made this um, hot air balloon hit up a a bargain end of the roll sale somewhere at like a fabric land or something. I just sort of used whatever they had to make all these colors go back together and fit together nicely. It's all done. And I'm just going to work on filling in the rest. I'm going to add a little bit more white to my plate because I used a lot of white today. And then I'm going to go back in with some more of this aqua green because I really, really like this color. Some more of this in there. And I'm just skipping the line so that I get that, that will have a chance to dry and it won't get pulled into this color.
Now I might be taking a little bit longer than you on this part because my canvas is bigger. If you have a smaller canvas, you might <clears throat> be a little ahead of me. And that's okay. Just take that time to maybe touch up your clouds. As you get lower, it gets a little bit more tricky. You might want to switch to a smaller round brush. Try to get in all those little little parts down here. I'm really at this point just mixing all the different colors on my plate to try to see what combinations of different shades and, and uh, paint colors I can make with what I already have. And in an interesting way, it, it ends up tying all these colors together too because you're making colors out of the colors that you, you have on your plate. So this is just a shade of that. This is your Zen time. You really gotta kind of be in the present moment to get all these squares filled in. Keep your mind a, a chance to relax and focus on something different for a little bit than the everyday. Nice break. Okay, so I've done quite a bit of the upper part. I'm going to go into the lower part now. I really like this color, so 
I'm gonna do some at the bottom with this color. <clears throat> just go here. And you're trying your best to stay in those lines, but it's okay if you're not exactly in them. No big deal. We're going to darken that same color back up. Go back. Through and get the other side of this girl. Well, if you're not as far as I am, that's okay. Just take your time. If you find your mind is wandering um, to other other ideas and maybe things on your to-do list and whatnot, try to bring it back to what you're doing here. I'm just kind of saying, you no, know, this time is for me to just kind of focus on being creative and trying something new. If you need to write something down, an idea so that you remember for later, go ahead and write it down and leave it on the paper and come back to the painting.
you can see I'm doing a couple lines where I'm doing two colors. So it's just like a lighter version of the other colors. So I might do <clears throat> like a medium blue and then a light blue or a dark blue and then a light uh, a medium blue. Making room for those gold pieces. It's tricky as you get down to the bottom to, to stay sort of in the in the lines. I'm going to go back and make another darker blue. If you need to get up and take a break, we'll all still be here doing this part for a little bit, so feel free if you need to get up. Okay. I'll go back to painting. Okay, so I'm just pulling some purple up top and I'll do this whole row purple.
like a gold one dancing with the ticket. Okay. So you guys have about, I don't know, maybe 15 more minutes. We're going to fill in all these squares. And I'm going to show you how to do the goal. And we're getting down to about 3.30. So in that case, if you want to stick around a little bit longer, you can, and I can teach you how to do a few more touch-ups. So for now, we're just going to maybe say like aim for 15 minutes to be done coloring in all your squares. And if that doesn't seem doable, we'll, we'll, we'll give it 20. I'm going to do a really light pink one next. As you're pulling the paint, you're pulling it sort of in the direction of your lines, too. You do the paint all one color. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm going to finish up this row. And then not all of mine are colored in, so probably not all of yours are either. And I think it's a good idea if I show you how to do one of the gold um, squares, just in case we run out of time, but also just in case anybody's ahead of me because they have a smaller uh, canvas and they're waiting to see the next step. I'm gonna finish with this pink. And then if everyone just wants to take a moment to look up, I will do one of the gold pieces. And then we can go back to filling it in and and whatnot as well. Okay, so I'm just going to get my glue stick. Now if you have stronger glue and you want to use it, that's great. Um, I'm just using a, a general glue stick. I've used this before, so it's pretty, uh, it's, it's one I use for adding gold. And it seems to work, so I'm keep using it and uh, I'm just going to scoop with my brush glue out of here. Get my brush coated in glue and then I just go to the area and I make sure that I'm coating the whole area. I'm just going to spread that glue around until it's really thin. So you don't have to be done yet, but I'm just giving you a little tutorial on the gold so that if we do run out of time, you have to leave because you plan to be here for four or just until four, but you still know what the next step is. Okay. So I'm almost done spreading my glue. Now I have a, a booklet of gold leaf. Sometimes you can find like little pieces of gold leaf that are all sort of sprinkled up and stuff, and that's fine to use for this too. You take your piece and pull it apart. You can add it right on. Now there's a little piece there, so I'll add that there. And we're just going to leave it there and let it dry for a minute. Let it 
stick on really well. I'll put this other little piece away just for now, back into the uh, booklet, because we'll need it for the other, other ones. So what I'm going to do is you let it dry for a little bit, and then you just take your brush and you get all these extra little pieces off. And anywhere where you didn't put the glue, it's going to come off. So just like that. Pretty easy, right? Does anybody need any, have any questions about the bowl? Try that now if you want. If you do have any questions, I'm sticking around for a little bit. I'm find it pretty easy to flip, uh, to flip it off. I like to stick to the glue. You might find little pieces for us. Covering around. Well, along with that, I guess I can show you how to do a whitewash to one of these or one or two colors um, as well. So I'm going to show you that now and then we can all carry on and paint right until four o'clock. And then I'll take any questions at that time. And if you have any questions or any tips at that time, I can stick around and answer anything. So I'm just going to take um, just a square brush. You can take the angle brush too for this. Both will work. And it's just like how we did it down here, but I'm just going to like gently pull almost a dry brush. Go along from the edges. And it just gives it a little bit more of a, a multi dimensional feel. And then also, if you've missed, if you've got some white spots in the canvas or you want to shape something up, this gives you a chance to really like fix any spots that maybe you had a, a little happy accident or whatnot in. So you can see it just sort of goes over top. And it does change the look a little bit from being just something that's like flat and matte to adding a little bit more interest. And with this um, bright, bright green down here too, add a little bit of play over top of these ones. You're not adding a thick layer, you're really thinning it out too. You can add some water to it. sideways or um, vertical. Variety of strokes on them, so up and down on the same square. You can see how it softens it and it really tones it down. softer side of the painting. So if you like your bold colors and you don't want to do this, you want to skip over this one, that's fine too. See, I'm really just using barely any paint on a fairly dry brush. Does that make sense? The gold pieces, that's gold leaf. Uh, but you can use gold paint too. Yeah, wait until the paint dries to use the wash. Um, I just, that's kind of why I picked like something a little bit, something that I had done a little while ago. But yeah.
Okay. Blend it in, play around with the different strokes, step back from it, see how you like it, see if you want more. There, more white. Oh, you're welcome. I think I'll add some more gold while you guys are painting. So that's sort of fun for me. And then if you do have any questions, just let me know. find gold leaf at Michael's or like Walmart, any craft supply store. Um, or like I said, you could just use um, gold paint and that's fine too. This is just sort of fun. And then they also have different colors of leaf. So you can get like a rose gold. Now, if you want to show me yours, um, you can just put your hands up and we can, you can show me that way. But if you want to share it with the group too, you can, I'm not sure if you can leave a picture in the comments, but you can definitely come onto the screen just by turning your speaker button on and then uh, you, we can put it to speaker view and we can see your painting if you'd like to hold it up. You want to give your gold a, a moment to dry before you try brushing it off just so that you make sure it sticks. Gold is really fun. I, I enjoy using it and then you can get really creative with it too. You can add it to any painting. Very delicate. It's super fun. Okay. 
I might be able to take this. There we go. That's another one. Oh, gold metallic or gold regular? Oh, I would use metallic. Yeah, no, you're welcome. Yeah, the, um, you definitely want a metallic look. But if you don't have metallic and you just have gold paint, that's okay too. It'll still give you a cool look. So when you're doing the whitewash, one tip I'd give you is just like, if you see any pencil marks, try to cover them. This is your correction time. This is your last um, sort of step that allows you to define edges or maybe fix something that may be bugging you. you. You see it on there and it's been bugging you for a while. So now's your chance to sort of go over it and, and hide it a little bit. Pencil you don't have to cover the whole thing in white, you can let little pieces and parts pop out. What makes it interesting is that you have all the colors and floating in the sky. It's got clouds, so light is just hitting it from all over the place, and this sort of sort of uh, will help you with that illusion of of uh, the different shadows and things like that without really getting in there and spending too long. Trying to define shadows. Nice little, little trick. It can be white or it could be like a really, really light blue or a really, really light purple too. It doesn't have to be too light. It's dry enough to take off.
All right, so we are getting closer to four o'clock. And like I said, I will stay on for a little bit longer to um, finish off my painting and paint along with you. But if you do have to leave, I do understand. Um, so if you do have any last minute questions, please um, put them in the comments or put your hand up and I'm happy to answer them in this last little bit before you have to go. And I hope that you enjoyed the time you had with this painting. Okay, everybody's still here, so I guess we're all finishing our paintings together. Yay! Good. And don't feel pressure to, to sit here if you do need to get up and stretch or do something too. Well, you're very welcome. Um, for Art by Rhiannon Berry or for Figment? Sorry, Laura Jane. Facebook's not letting you into. Um, you can find. Um, I can I can add you in if you've tried to join the group Art by Rian and Barry. Or you can send me a private message and then I will message you with more instructions if you'd like. So. It's a group on Facebook called Art by Rian and Barry. Or I always put my upcoming gentle painting um, sessions on www.bwimsy, so it's p e 
W-H-I-M-S-I, Artloft, A-R-T-L-O-F-T dot C-A. You can definitely find any updates there. And you can find my Facebook group by going there too. It's all linked. Yeah, it's, um, do you want me to, I'll type it. Okay. And if you enjoyed the finger painting on this one, you'll have a link there to my YouTube channel with the finger painting for the Smoky Forest too. Sorry, I was using the wrong message spot. One second. You know, yeah, I think you'll really like the, the Smoky Mountains because like I said, it's like 95% is finger painting. You need maybe a fan brush and a flat brush for that one. Yeah, I look forward to seeing you at another gentle painting. Let me see. Ooh, nice. Very nice. Ooh, I like your colors. That's really fun. Good job. Do you like it? You can turn your microphone on if you want so everybody can see in speaker view. It's a mute, a mute button. Yep. There we go. That's awesome. Thanks, thanks for the session. This is the first time that I am into uh, oh, there's another session. session. And that's my son who was doing it in uh, Pablo. That's, that's so nice. I love I love how it's so different, right? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit different. Thank you. Thanks for the session. You're welcome. Hope to see you at another one sometime. That's good. Have a great day, guys. Oh, good job. Whose is this one? Mel. Oh, cool. You did such a great job. Is that gold paint? You have to unmute. Oh, yeah. Yes, oh. yes, it is gold paint. And what are you painting on? Um, paper. Oh, paper. Yeah, um, watercolor paper, actually. Yeah, I can tell it's something a little bit different from canvas. It looks really cool. Yeah. You're almost finished too. Yeah, yeah. Just need the white. Good for you catching up and staying up with me. I was a little worried about you guys, but you've all come come all the way to the end with me, so that's great. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Have a great day. Thank you. Does anybody else want to show theirs or? <clears throat> I know there's a few more people. No takers? Okay, I'm gonna stay on for about another 15 minutes and I'm gonna finish up mine. So you're <clears throat> more than welcome to paint along with me. <clears throat> it's, oh, there we go.
Bottom, it's just easier to make that final one. One point and then change the right box or the top of it to get more definition. Let's go dry.
So stick. Okay, I think this is enough. Um, I'm going to put gold on that one, but then I'm going to paint in the other. Let's 
Okay, I'm just going to take the gold off these ones. I'll leave that one for a minute just because it's just put on. I don't want it to. And like I said, I think that's my last gold one. So I'm just going to paint this one in pink. I don't know if that one up there is sort of a pink color too. All right, so we are at the end of our time together. Um, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments now. Um, if not, it was great spending my afternoon with you. And uh, I hope to see you at a future painting session. You can spend some time fixing yours up as well. I'll probably spend a little bit of time maybe later this evening or tomorrow afternoon touching mine up. But, I'm really happy with how it turned out and I love <clears throat> the addition of the green. So and you guys are all very welcome. So talk to you later and thank you for joining me.